Good morning everyone and welcome to Quest at Home uh, on our weekly morning video. Just uh, check in that I said that right, Quest at Home, yes. And um, yes, this morning we're going to talk about transitions and changes and tranquility, which is a great subject as we in Australia go into autumn and the seasons are changing. So welcome, welcome. And thank you for coming to hear, uh, be with us in this community and um, take advantage of the teachings of Quest and whether you're watching this live with me now or later in a replay, it's just as wonderful and a great resource to have together. So we will commence this morning. Uh, as we do at Quest, we start everything by doing nothing, which I just love thinking that as well as doing that. And it gives um, others a chance to join us as they come in out of their Wednesday mornings or whenever you're arriving. So very gently bringing our awareness into this present moment by focusing on the feet and feeling our feet and whether they're barefoot on the floor or the earth or they're in some comfy slippers or socks or shoes just tuning in to the soles of the feet in particular and feeling feeling the all the many nerve endings on the soles of the feet that relate to the whole body so just bringing your awareness there and noticing are there any sensations right in this moment in the soles of your feet and perhaps you are able to feel a slight tingling or noticing which is that electromagnetic energy the whole body is emitting pulsing out 0 0.07 volts from every cell in our body remarkable every second so if you can feel that if that's available to you feeling that and feeling that connecting that pulse pulsing into the earth and whether you're right on the earth or several floors above the earth or even in a plane 30,000 feet above the earth it's interesting how we can still be aware of some sense of connection and whether that's you know a combination of our mind physicality it doesn't matter it's just interesting to presence ourselves to that connection we are beings on planet earth today whenever this day is so feeling that sense of connection to the earth and sense of you starting to be here and bringing your attention back from whatever you've been doing up until now this morning or today and it's always this curious process when we pay attention to it of actually deliberately intending to withdraw our attention from perhaps random thoughts, perhaps noises in the environment, perhaps um, focusing on deliberate tasks that we've had in to do so far today. And we, we just make that choice to say, I will now bring, gather my attention to the body in this present moment. That is actually a very, very powerful life choice to make. It's so, and often we say it or we hear it and somewhat take it for granted, oh yes, I'll just do that. But actually it's really the key to what we're going to be talking about today, to finding tranquility, to finding that inner peace, no matter what is going on around us or even within us, is to make that deliberate choice to say, and right here, right now, I'm bringing my awareness, my attention, my intention into the simplicity of feeling my feet land on the floor, on the earth, wherever I am. And we know, and it's been measured, replicatedly measured many times, that simply that act starts to make changes in the body instantaneously. And we can feel it very quickly, uh, often that we, we notice, oh, I suddenly I can feel even 2% calmer. So the power of our intention 
is really actually our most powerful resource and we demonstrate it to ourselves every time we do this simple process. So, so far we've brought our attention to the feet, the soles of the feet connecting into the earth, the presence of this magnificent planet that we are on who's making her way around the sun today for the millionth, trillionth time and we're on board and so then we're also going to bring our attention to the pull of gravity which gives us this sense of weightedness on the chair or the bed or wherever you're landed today. So I'm just going to adjust my seat having brought my attention to it, slight discomfort. So noticing that the power of gravity Potentially, you'd say the most powerful force in our lives keeps us on the ground, keeps us able to function here, and we can't see it. Uh, we can't see if it's working or not, and we do experience it because we feel this weightedness in the chair, and that is gravity pulling us into the earth. And doesn't it shift something in our awareness when we simply go, ah, there is a force I am experiencing this force of the Earth's gravitational field pulling me into itself. So we can get very distracted by perhaps numbers or experiences around the weight of the body. But how about we shift that thinking to, wow, that weight is a measurement of how much perceived matter is being pulled into the earth itself. And that, that kind of goes in my head. I just shift that thought into this moment and bring that into this moment. There are my feet connecting into that ground force and here's my the weight of the body being held on the chair for me. I don't have to think about it. Held on the chair for me as I presence my consciousness, my awareness into the experience of being in the body, the physical body, this time, this day, this moment, whenever you're watching this and hearing these words. This is the most powerful way to begin the practice of being here now. And I'm pretty sure you'll all be familiar with that saying, which is a great truism you know the past is gone the future is yet to come and the only thing that truly exists in the moment is the gift of the present play on words on present so here we are in this moment and then let's explore with our awareness the input of the five senses given that it's a narrow range of all the things that actually exist in the environment at any given time and it's what we're experiencing. So are you experiencing this moment? Any sounds in your close environment, in your room, in your garden, wherever you are? Just tuning in for a moment to that sense, the ability to hear a noise or a silence and then expanding the range of that ability to hear outside to the birds, the traffic, the wind, anything that's a plane, anything that's in your environment, voices. And just noticing that it's there and noticing your ability to register that sound in your experience of this moment. And then bringing our awareness to as we inhale, are there any aromas that we're aware of? And it's interesting even if there don't seem to be because there's so many things in our environment potentially that may be releasing particles. And maybe there are, maybe there aren't. Just noticing that ability to inhale and receive aromas or not. And then the sense of touch. So are you holding your own hands or are your hands resting on your body anywhere? Can you feel 
the touch of some of your clothing on your skin. And it is one of the reasons we wring our hands when we're anxious is it is very helpful for all those receptor sites in the hands to feel human touch. And so if you don't have anyone else's hand to hold at any given moment, you always have your own. So you might want to practice that now, just interlacing the hands and feeling the sense of that touch. Any tastes that you may be aware of lingering? Toothpaste, morning coffee, just noticing that sense of the taste. And sight, and maybe you have your eyes closed or softly gazing. But even behind closed eyes, there can be lights and different shades and sights. And so noticing now that having brought your awareness into the senses of the body, the feedback system into the brain of what the body is able to experience, it does have an effect on your internal state. And can you notice the difference in your internal state now than 10 minutes ago when we started this practice? And if you can, what do you notice about that? And most of us would be reporting that we're noticing being calm, calmer, still, more present, the mind has quieted. And this is a tremendous noticing and a tremendous gift because this process, today I've taken 10 minutes to do it with you because I've expanded certain points that came into my awareness and you can do it in five minutes, you can do it in one minute. But bringing our own awareness, our conscious thought into the experience of the body in the present moment is the singular most powerful tool to finding tranquility in the face of change, which is our topic for today. And I love um, our beautiful author of this tranquility in transition beautiful alliteration and this practice that we've just done together is our singular most powerful practice simply taking a breath becoming aware and awareness is always the first step in any kind of change so the moment we become aware of a disruption a distortion, a disturbance around change. And is it that a noise has just come into our environment? The temperatures change, people have just arrived, people have left, a news story has just come at us. Um, you know, traffic's gotten heavy, all the things. There are too many to mention. I'm just throwing out examples that might be frequent for you. And some of these are huge changes. I know that many in our Quest family have had floods and fires destroy their whole homes and everything in their environment has changed literally overnight. Massive. Or if we've had one of the dreaded Ds, a disaster, a diagnosis, a death, it changes our internal environment and our external environment instantaneously. And so the most important skill we can develop for ourselves to remain response able rather than reactive is to in the, the minute we notice a heart rate a tummy rumble a irritation and aggravation to go <gasps> deep breath and it's been it's you know everyone said it was a deep breath count to 10 well the science is all behind it now completely true and we've expanded it now, okay, deep breath. Feel that breath. Feel my weightedness in the gravity of this moment and bring my awareness into myself. One of the things we've discovered about what people do in moments of change and whether it's sudden, unexpected, or even if it's something you've planned for, 
It's interesting how often this happens around weddings and marriages, you know, something you've longed for and planned for and holidays. Have you experienced this yourself? A longed for planned holiday, family gathering, wedding party of some kind has been anticipated and then the event arrives and you can barely be present because there's so been so much lead up and then afterwards you'll often hear people say oh it's as if I've never been or you know it happened so quickly or what was a blur on the day or some comment about I wasn't able to hold myself present for the experience and this is a very common phenomena that we are more comfortable planning into the future and reminiscing about the past, it's easier because we can switch it on and off and we can leave. And what is most uncomfortable for pretty much everybody is to actually be able to be present right here, right now in those moments. And for many of us, any of us who had trauma, anxiety in childhood, we have often developed an unconscious reaction, which is there's a little person in us who just says, no, I'm out of here and we're gone. And then we were like, what, what did you say? I can't quite hear, I can't think properly. Frontal lobes shut down when we're in shock or we're startled. So I'm only saying this and you're probably familiar with quite a lot of it, that a lot happens in the body with changes and it's not in our control. And it can be in our awareness. And the minute it comes into our awareness, and quite possibly because of our own reactive state, <gasps> I'm breathless, I'm anxious, I'm nervy, I'm jumpy, I'm angry, uh, whatever the feelings that I'm experiencing in the moment. The peace, the path to any kind of tranquility going forward is to catch as it were the moment and go okay before I do anything or say anything unless it's a crisis and you have to be a first responder and do what you got to do of course that's a given get the hell out of here do what we need to do that's but if it's not that I, I don't it's not to me to respond make something happen or prevent something in this moment it's just there is change of foot either sudden or gradual or slow or a lot or too much, and I'm having a reaction to it, then my number one tool to grab out of my toolbook is bring myself this body, which of course, remember at Quest we share, I have a body, I'm not my body, it's not actually who I am, but it's my main center of awareness, and it's showing up somehow to bring myself my conscious awareness back into contact with this body and be there because you probably all know and if you had a puppy dog or a small child with you who was frightened or alarmed or reacting or didn't want to go somewhere or didn't want to do something or didn't like the changes you would know that what you need to do is be present with them not tell them come on you have to do it Sometimes you do have to do that as well, but when you don't, then you can say, I know this is hard, I know you don't want to, I'm here, we'll do it together, we'll find a way to make this work together. Change is part of life on the planet, is absolutely, actually unavoidable. So we're going to get better at helping ourselves with change. And the first thing is that I'm here with myself in this body and with whoever else I may need to be with if I have a child or someone that I'm assisting in the moment. And the best way to do that is to take those breaths, three conscious breaths, and with the out breath go, there's my feet on the floor. There's the weight of gravity on the chair or on the feet. There's my ability to hear some sounds and take a breath. Here's my conscious awareness coming into the moment. And maybe I want to bring my awareness into my beating heart. 
and breathe into it and help it to slow just two or three percent not a hundred percent there's my ability to put my hands on my belly maybe it's reacting and tight and got butterflies and breathe into it and say I'm here I am present with myself in this moment to assist myself to be calm to feel some peace even in the middle of a changing situation you know the the number one skill and message at quest is that it is our relationship with ourselves that truly determines our state of mind and if we are automatically leaving ourselves and jumping out and what do I mean by that I mean jumping out into are you okay are you okay everybody else first rather than ourselves and we remember the oxygen mask on a plane they don't say to you if something happens you run around make sure the captain's okay make sure everybody else is okay before you look after yourself they say no they say you sit still we'll handle it put your oxygen mask on first even if you have a child with you because if you're not breathing nothing else can happen so this ability to tune into ourselves in our own state before doing the next thing whether that's I need to make a phone call now or I need to adjust something or I need to change something I need to talk to someone I need to get up and leave here all valid options but better choices are made when we've come back home to ourselves and say okay and I some of you have heard me do it at Quest because it's a, such a habit now I hand on hands on heart so okay sweetheart what do we need right now and you know sometimes we don't have a clue so we're like ah don't even know can't think I'm, I'm jammed the circuits are jammed I'm not sure don't know don't know what to do don't know what I how I think or feel just not liking this whatever this is you know and we're in our fight flight freeze response so I'm a freezer I'm there going deer in headlights somebody else might be up running out the door somebody else might be going well if only you'd all get your act together this wouldn't be happening right bless us all humans we've we've outlined these re reactions now we all have a version of them so in navigating change it helps to know what is my version of these so that I can notice what I'm doing because I may be frozen not functioning not able to make a choice at a time when it would be really helpful if I could and so rather than going you know come on quickly do something it's like okay sweetheart what do we need don't know can't tell okay let's just follow sometimes for a freezing person and you know you'll notice this with animals and children you, you just follow the impulse okay I'm, I'm getting it I'm getting up you know sometimes it's like I'm following myself okay I appear to be getting up appear to be going to the kitchen appear to be making a cup of tea all right valid response <laughs> you do that then or I'm just sitting and I'm not don't feel like I'm doing anything much but I'm taking some time for myself and now I'm starting to tune into my breathing valid response right so and these can be moment by moment if we're dealing with a long-term change or a small change the key is that we're doing something with awareness and we're choosing to do it consciously because maybe once I'm going okay apparently I'm having a cup of tea and sitting down okay good move let's do that then and while I'm sitting here let the dust settle so that the next impulse can emerge oh I know what I want to do I want to call that person and tell them this has happened or I want to shut all those windows so I'm not listening to that noise or I want to get online and see what this really is about you know all valid options so this finding tranquility has needs to be a commitment we've made to ourselves no matter what comes up and you know we've all been surprised a lot in the last five years 
COVID was a big surprise. Being restrained in our houses was a big surprise. Being told we all had to go and get a vaccination was a big surprise. Like there were many surprising things happening and we had no, we didn't expect it. We didn't know it was coming. We didn't have a plan. You know, we're always planning for the bushfires or the floods or whatever's in our environment. We're, you know, risk management. But no, we weren't, we didn't, we weren't planning for that. And so for many of us, let's see if this feels true for you, we've lost some of our security. And I'm going with the grotty marks because security is always really an illusion because as most of us questies know, unexpected things do happen in ways we can't have imagined. But something we all share is this COVID experience. It happened to all of us at the same time. And, and some of us are still going, and you know, now we there's pre-COVID life and there's post-COVID life and there's what happened in the middle and we've got reference points. But it was surprising and a lot of us, I my observation of myself, my clients, people I talk to is that we certainly aren't going back to where we were before, but we're way more cautious and we're may, way more, um, you know, cautious about change. We're cautious about making changes. Um, we're kind of watching out for the next thing, which is all common responses to people who've had traumas. And, and I, absolutely COVID was traumatic. If we just take that loose definition of trauma, which is any uh, uh, an incident where we think we're going to die or someone else is going to die, even if we don't know that person. This was being flashed on our screens all the time. So these were huge changes. And most of us, could we say all of us, had real moments of not feeling tranquil at all, or feeling scared and, and not knowing what to do and being amazed that we couldn't leave our houses and and unsure of ourselves and kind of loss of identity almost many things so i'm just bringing that forward as a shared experience we all have and that building that resource of tranquility going forward we can we can recognize now that 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 is important it's an important skill to have and we need to be able to softly gently you know kind of notice our own tendencies our own behaviors in this and allow for them and love ourselves for them rather than criticize them i'll just share one that i became aware of yesterday because i just had to laugh at myself i don't know about where you live but i live up the sunshine coast in queensland and the temperature dropped below 20 degrees for the first time in since october um, last week or something, you know, it was like, and suddenly everyone's like, oh, we were all like, oh, it's cold. Now I know where you live, that might be a balmy day, but it was hilarious, right? Because like, suddenly it's like, oh, the temperature dropped. And somewhere in my brain, you know, the automatic program was right, jeans and singlet and long sleeves. That is the uniform now. No more dresses, no more, you know, um, skirts. No, we're, we're cha the uniform's changing. I didn't even know I had a uniform actually. <laughs> it was like, and, and then in the middle of the day, I get very hot and I was saying to someone, yes, they were going, oh, it's hot. And I go, yes, and I'm in my uniform and I can't change it because the temperature's gone below 20 degrees. So it's just hilarious is what prompted this idea of talking about the seasons. And I'm thinking, I, you know, I know people, I've never actually lived all year round somewhere where it snows and then it's hot in the summer, like, many people do and you know but there's really dramatic change of seasons this is pretty mild but i was fascinated to observe that i had a i had a program and, a, and an outfit and a rule about what had to happen and how to manage it and it's like oh this is what we do right and so even a a slight change well, a change of good 10 degrees in temperature but you know we we have a we like to have a plan and we like to have a an idea that we can manage it and control it and be in charge of it, which is reasonable and a, also a reasonable response. And many times, as we've all learned recently, we don't have one because it's something we don't know or we haven't encountered. So I can't believe I'm running out of time. That feels like the fastest 
half an hour on record. I've got another half hour to say, but another time. But suffice it to say that we can assist ourselves so powerfully to move through these changes with tranquility in a piece. And it really is, if you go back maybe later and listen again to the first part of today's um, talk, which is about, it's that awareness of coming back to ourselves, being present with ourselves and doing this simple, simple process. That means that we can breathe, we can think, and we can peacefully move through the change in a way that will serve us in, and help us to keep going forward in a way that feels calm and, the, and bring the best that we can bring to the situation. So I hope that's been helpful for you this morning and that, it, that you are navigating the seasonal changes where you are uh, perhaps a little less rigidity than me and that you have a wonderful day today and we will see you again next week at the same time. Thank you everybody.